estimations are hard. Like, really hard. I have never worked on a team that was good at them. I've worked on some teams that were okay on them. I've worked on a ton of teams that are terrible at them. I think that's okay. I think that if you build an estimation system where you're expecting it to go wrong, and it's less a guarantee of how long something will take and more an indicator of who should be taking the task, roughly how long the timeline might look for that, I think that you can use points in a way that do bring value. I want to be straightforward. We don't use points at Ping right now because the work it takes to make a point system that brings value and doesn't just frustrate people when things don't get completed in time is very, very difficult. But that doesn't mean you can't find a way to use them that works. And I want to talk all about some of those solutions and methods that you can use to properly estimate your deliverables and your tasks at your company. First, when we talk about estimation, I think it's important to identify what your goal for estimations are. So why are we estimating? So a lot of different reasons we might want to estimate something. Identify who should do it. Identify when it should be done. Identify how long it will take. Prioritize based on all or based on all the above. I'd say these are the general reasons why people do estimates. I, somebody's calling another one. Uh, it's actually pretty good. Identify low performers and people who aren't getting enough done by a measurement. And I think that a lot of the reasons people estimate are for these to figure out who should be doing a thing, when it should be done by, how long it will take, who's not getting enough done, and then how we as a company can prioritize everything based on all of that. So which of these are accessible and how do we measure them? I'm going to drop the hot take early on that one of these in particular just is not going to happen. The how long it will take, it's just going to be wrong, period. Could be accurate at times, but not always. And I think it's easy as like, a PM or even like myself as a person now CEO who runs a company to fall for the trap that a, a point value means once that's assigned, it will be that long until it's done. That's just wrong. That's not the case. Given that we can't identify how long something will take, how can we turn these other things into valuable measurements? I'm going to propose, and I've thought about this a lot, but not recently, a new measurement system for estimation. It's not going to be based on one value, like a single number that you assign. It's going to be based on a few. Complexity, time, confidence. So complexity is how hard is this thing to do? So if I have a task that's like, I also think these should probably be ranked out of 10. So given a complex task, something that is some weird for us at like paying some weird WebRTC bullshit that I have a lot of experience with that nobody else at the company does. We might label that task like a 10 out of 10. Instead of complexity, you could even like relabel this as specialization. I think that would be fair too. So complexity or specialization. I think I prefer complexity. It's it's a score of how specific and how skilled should the person doing this thing be. Then there's time. How long do we think this will, should be worked on? This is probably the most complex one to measure. And as I was hinting at before, this will almost always be wrong, which is why I don't think it should be a number that can be mapped to an amount of time. I think a one out of 10 for the, the time complexity is also valuable in the sense that a one means this is a quick one line fix somebody can go do fast and a 10 is this thing's gonna take a while and we're not very sure quite how long long is. And then there's confidence, which is what are the chances that complexity or time were wrong? So this is a, a third field. I think it's very important. This is the thing that's missing from a lot of estimation systems is a way to say, how confident are we in this estimate? So let's take a, a random task we had at Ping. This is a real task somebody had. Display voice levels in pre-call view. 
So in Ping, we have a view that you get to before the call starts where you can like make sure your camera's working, make sure your mic's working, get all your devices and stuff set up before you join the call. But we had no indication in that view of whether or not your mic was working and how loud it was. And we wanted to introduce that somehow. This was a task that we thought wouldn't be too complex. So if we were to measure it, and I'll just do it in line here, complexity. Given a task like displaying voice levels in a pre-call view, the deliverable is pretty clear. We have this view displayed in other places. It should be pretty simple in terms of like, use the code we have somewhere else, drop it in. I'd probably give that like a three to four out of 10 because anything that touches like Agora or other infrastructure that like is more WebRTC stuff is inherently gonna be a little complex. The time, as I somebody put in chat, complexity, effort, and risk. I think that maps pretty well with how I'm describing things here. The time, and actually I'm gonna, I'm gonna rename these, I like that. I'm stealing your verbiage, Vitvad, appreciate it. Cool, so complexity, effort. We thought this one would be pretty quick, so I'll give us like a two. It was not a one line change, it was actual things to be done, but it seemed pretty simple. Risk. Since this is using third party dependencies and device stuff, risk is inherently pretty high. So I put that pretty high. What ended up happening with this task was turns out with RSDK, if you're not in a call, you don't get reliable indication or indication that someone's talking. So it turned out that our risk was pretty accurate. And because our risk was accurate at six out of 10, these two were very wrong. Complexity was closer to like a six or a seven and effort was closer to like a four or a five. The risk was a good indicator here though of how wrong these things could be. The value of these scores isn't, this tells you immediately how long this thing will take. It's much more so that I, as the, the PM and the person divvying out tasks and running the company and making these decisions, can more easily identify who the right person for the task is and why they might be the right person for it. This also helps me a ton as I try to level up my employees where if I have a, a person on the team who's more junior career-wise, I might start by giving them low complexity, high effort tasks, but as I notice that they're killing those tasks quickly and that the effort that I'm putting on for scores here might not be that accurate based on how quickly they're closing things, maybe I lean them into more complex things instead. And I've consistently been impressed with when I shift uh, more junior employees work away from high effort, low complexity to medium effort, high complexity, how hard they go. And I have seen some developers, I would never have guessed deliver some crazy shit once you take into account this distribution of things. And I, think there's a lot of value in thinking this way because complexity and time, well, in this case, complexity and effort are very different things. And most estimation systems conflate the two. I think that's the biggest problem with estimations is they pretend complexity and effort are the same and they ignore risk entirely. So when I estimate with numbers, I try to break it out in this way. What I classify unknowns in complexity or risk I would generally put them in risk. The risk is high enough that we're not sure at all where to put the complexity. So like, let's say we don't know if there's even a way to detect voice levels. Instead of the task being display voice levels, I might've made a separate task of identify how to get voice levels from third party SDK. And this task is going to be complexity that we know because there's docs to read. So go read the docs and dig in pretty low complexity effort. This is a research task. This will hopefully be low. So we'll put that at two out of 10 as well. Then risk high, but nowhere near as high four out of 10. And by creating this task ahead of time, we can significantly mitigate the risk such that it's clear what goes where, but like if you have a problem where it's unclear what goes under risk and what goes under complexity, I think you might have a second task of research to do ahead of time that might help out a lot in that way, generally speaking. Not always the case, but I think that if you find yourself really struggling to know how complex is this thing, 
What you have is a research task, not a deliverable. And starting with the research task and then moving to the deliverable, maybe five research tasks to figure out the things you're less certain of before moving to the deliverable. But separating those out can be very helpful in having less risky and less, less complex estimations as you make decisions. Identifying unknowns is a separate task, in my opinion, if possible. There will always be smaller unknowns, but the bigger ones that fuck with your complexity, those are the ones that I think you should snipe out ahead if you can. So yeah, this is how I think about estimates. And again, I want to be clear, we're not doing this. This is something I want to do when we get to the size and the point where it makes sense for us to do these things. But right now, we have a gut feel because we're a small team. We have five people working on the code and one additional person working on the everything else. We're all on the same tracker in linear and we all keep track of who's working on what and have a good idea of how long things will take ish as good as it can be and a decent enough gut feel of how well equipped any person is for any task i think in these ways but i don't measure in these ways just yet so take this as a proposal this is a way i would like to try doing estimates and measurements it is a thing I intend to try when we get to the size and the scale where it's necessary for us to have an estimation system. I'm tired of the t-shirt bullshit, tired of the Fibonacci bullshit. I really want to think in terms of what is hard and who has the skill to do it, what is long and who has the time to do it, and what's the risk and how wrong are we about these other two things. Thank you again for asking these awesome questions and bringing these topics up. This one was actually brought up by an incredibly generous gifter. This was locked and coded, right? I just want to be positive. He was the one who asked. Yep, locked and coded. Huge shout out. Gifted 176 subscriptions in one stream. And all he asked for was this topic, which I want to be clear. If somebody else dropped, you're probably using story ports or points wrong in my chat. I probably would have went on this rant anyways because it's a really fun rant. So huge shout out to locked. Huge shout out to everybody watching this video because will certainly be a video on the YouTube now. And huge shout out to everyone for hanging out for this. Hope this was a useful rant. Thank you again, y'all. Subscribe on YouTube if you haven't yet. Come hang out in the Discord.